logical reason for all this. Shut up! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movies that picked the wrong name. Vin Diesel is Triple X. The situation you find yourself in is of your own doing. Well, that's good news. Yeah. For this list, we're looking at movies with inaccurate, misguided, or just bad titles that could have used some tweaking. Remember that you can't always judge a movie by its title, as some of these are classics. Others, however, live up to their poor titles. What movie do you think picked the wrong name? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Based on the book Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, one might assume that this adaptation is all about Willy Wonka due to the title. Yes! The danger must be growing, for the rowers keep on rowing, and they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing! <laughs> Yet Charlie remains the true focus throughout, and the mysterious Candyman doesn't appear until the second act. The title was apparently changed to promote Quaker Oats tie-in Wonka Bar, which didn't even end up in stores. While Charlie reclaimed his titular character status in the Tim Burton reimagining, that film arguably put more emphasis on Johnny Depp's Wonka. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Number 19. Arthur Christmas Okay, let's show them, people. Operation Santa Claus is coming to town. Centered on Santa's son, this underrated Christmas movie deserves a wider audience. We think the title may have contributed to its financial failure. We get that Arthur Christmas derives from Father Christmas, the English name for Santa Claus. Since Arthur's surname is Claus, though, shouldn't it be called Arthur Claus? Who knows? Maybe the filmmakers wanted to avoid comparison to Fred Claus, but everyone seems to confuse this movie with the Aardvark and Dudley Moore character. Number 18. Tangled All right, listen, I didn't want to have to do this, but you leave me no choice. Here comes the smolder. Based on a fairy tale called Rapunzel about a character named Rapunzel, this Disney film was naturally going to be called Rapunzel. After The Princess and the Frog underperformed, however, Disney gave Rapunzel a more gender-neutral title, Tangled. So I have made the decision to trust you. A horrible decision. Many audiences and even Disney animators like Floyd Norman found the change unnecessary, but it kicked off a trend, with the Snow Queen becoming Frozen. What's next? A Princess and the Frog series just called Tiana? Oh, wait. Number 17, Army of Darkness. Who the hell are you? Name's Ash. Housewares. We love the Evil Dead movies, but the titles can be confusing. Evil Dead 2 is more of a remake slash parody of its predecessor than a sequel. While the third film is a direct follow-up, you wouldn't guess that based on the name. Being such a departure, we suppose Evil Dead 3 wasn't the most appropriate title. Since it's part of the Evil Dead franchise, though, we think Army of Darkness should have kept its original title, Medieval Dead. Number 16, Triple X. This is one of those movies where you need the announcer to clarify the title in the trailer. Vin Diesel is Triple X. Taken and stirred. If you looked at the poster, one might assume that it's called XXX as opposed to Triple X. We also wouldn't be surprised if a few people thought the film was about an alcoholic beverage or the kind of movie you'd find in the adults only section of a video store. Grand Theft Auto, Reckless Endangerment, and that little bridge stunt of yours makes you a three time loser. Maybe you ought to call yourself Triple X. Why not just call it Xander Cage? Number 15, War for the Planet of the Apes. I do not start this war. This otherwise amazing trilogy has its titles all mixed up. The first film should have had Dawn in the title, as the Planet of the Apes was just beginning. The second film should have had War in the title, as the conflict between the humans and apes started to escalate. Apes! Do not want war! Then the third film should have been Rise of the Planet of the Apes, as the evolved primates inherit the Earth humans once ruled. There, we fixed it. Number 14, Brazil. It's hard to describe this utterly unique sci-fi satire in one word. Likewise, the title does little to reflect the plot. 
The movie doesn't take place in Brazil, center on a character from Brazil, or have anything to do with the country. Well, that's awful. While the name stems from the song Aquarela do Brasil, which is featured in the movie, it still comes off as misleading. Given its offbeat tone, however, you could argue that having the wrong name feels kind of right. <laughs> Number 13. The Never-Ending Story We understand that this fantasy movie's title wasn't meant to be taken literally. There are many different ways to interpret the story's never-ending nature. You come any closer, I will rip you to shreds. At the end of the day, though, the movie concludes after 94 minutes. To paraphrase Lionel Hutz, that's fraudulent advertising. This is the most blatant case of fraudulent advertising since my suit against the film The Never-Ending Story. If you really don't want the story to end, there are two sequels and an animated series. You know what? You're better off stopping where the first film ended, inaccurate title aside. Number 12. Honey, I Blew Up the Kid All right, I confess, I did it! Did what? pick a -boo! I blew up the baby! Where the first film had Wayne Zielinski shrink his kids, the sequel sees his two-year-old son grow to the size of a building. Adam, don't touch the guitar! No, Adam! Adam, put down the guitar! The title suggests something much darker. When we first heard it, we all jumped to the conclusion that Zelensky literally blew up his kid to smithereens. Obviously, that wasn't going to happen in a Disney movie, but the title could have clarified. Then again, Honey, I Enlarged the Kid isn't nearly as attention-grabbing. Number 11. Romancing the Stone All right, cousin. As usual, you got us in some serious sh** here. This Robert Zemeckis film is an adventure in the spirit of Indiana Jones, although the screenplay was written five years before Raiders of the Lost Ark. Based on the title, one would expect a rom-com centering on someone attempting to literally strike up a relationship with an actual stone or some sort of stone creature. Jesus Christ, we're in a lot of trouble. Understatement of the year, asshole. Sure, there's romance, there is a stone, and jewelers may appreciate the title. Death of the Green Jewel would better reflect its adventurous tone, though. Number 10. The Constant Gardener Look, old chap, do you think it's stop doing that a moment? Something wrong? Going into this thrilling drama, we anticipated something a tad more tranquil. Gardening is such a peaceful activity. We figured that the biggest conflict would be Peter Rabbit eating some of Ray Fine's carrots. Either that, or maybe his azaleas might get stepped on. That title did not prepare us for a movie where Fines is widowed and a corporate scandal is unearthed. Although there is gardening, it ties in more figuratively to the hero's journey. Don't try and play detective. Number 9. Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2 You know, if you don't believe in the Blair Witch, then why the hell did you bother to come? I thought the movie was cool. Coming off its immensely popular predecessor, we were intrigued to find out what the Book of Shadows was. More than 20 years later, we still don't know what the Book of Shadows is. It is never mentioned or seen in the film, despite popping up in the teaser. Perhaps the title was a gimmick to attract the charmed audience? In any case, why does the subtitle come first? It should at least be Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows. What is this? What did you make us do? Number 8. Edge of Tomorrow Based on the light novel All You Need Is Kill, most audiences underestimated this sci-fi flick due to its marketing. It's obvious I don't belong here. So please, Sergeant, there has to be a way I can make a phone call. An uninspired title like Edge of Tomorrow doesn't represent the film's inventive screenplay or cool action. Doug Lyman wanted to call the film Live, Die, Repeat, although the studio didn't take his suggestion until the film's home media release. If that sequel is still happening, please keep the reported title Live, Die, Repeat, and Repeat. Hmm, we wonder what the third movie's title is going to be. Listen to me. Listen to me. Neither one of us is getting out of here. Number 7. Avengers Age of Ultron Whenever the Avengers assemble, we expect epic things. While Age of Ultron is by no means small in scale, the story doesn't quite live up to its intimidating title. Wouldn't have been my first call. But down in the real world, we're faced with ugly choices. To make matters confusing, the movie also shares the same title as a Marvel Comics crossover event, which has a completely different storyline. Although the minds behind the movie said it would have a different plot, why didn't they just come up with a new title? It's also not exactly Age of Ultron, seeing as how the Avengers defeat him in a few days tops. Well, that was easy. You know, 
With the benefit of hindsight. Number 6. Bambi 2 for a dark period, Disney had a habit of releasing direct-to-video sequels to their animated classics. It's difficult to explain. Oh. Well, at least some of them were sequels. Others took place somewhere in the middle of their predecessors. Like Tarzan 2 and Fox and the Hound 2, Bambi 2 is an interquel that fills the gap between the emotional scarring and the titular deer getting Twitterpated. Twitterpated? Despite the two, it's no sequel. At least The Lion King 1 and a half was honest. Number 5. I Still Know What You Did Last Summer This slasher sequel takes place a year after the first film. So, technically, it should be called I Know What You Did Two Summers Ago. I Know What You Did Last Summer 2 also would have made more sense. As is, the title is about as competent as our main characters, who think the capital of Brazil is Rio de Janeiro. Oh no, did you say Rio? No. Yes? Yes! You Yes! It's actually Brasilia, by the way. Hey, maybe this movie should have been called Brazil. We didn't even answer the radio question right! This whole thing was a setup! Number 4. Saw, the final chapter. If Friday the 13th taught us anything, it's that the final chapter is never the final chapter. At least not in the horror genre. The situation you find yourself in is of your own doing. Nevertheless, the Saw franchise continued this gimmick with its quote-unquote final chapter, despite being followed by 2017's Jigsaw, with more films coming. Adding to the confusion, the film is alternatively known as Saw 3D, which just gets us mixed up with Saw 3. Why wasn't the movie simply called Saw 7? It's quite flattering how many people have responded to my story, and if I can help a few people along the way, then, then I'm, I'm pleased. Number 3. Troll 2 this title has one word and one number, and neither is accurate. There, there must be a logical reason for all of this. Shut up! For starters, the film has no trolls. The villains are vegetarian goblins, hence why the original script was called Goblins. The higher-ups didn't have much faith in the film, however. Gee, we can't imagine why. So they falsely advertised it as a sequel to Troll, even though there was no real connection. We all know what this movie should have been named. Oh my god! Number 2. Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Star Wars is another franchise that got its titles turned around. Since Episode 1 commences Anakin Skywalker's origin story, that film probably should have been Rise of Skywalker, and Episode 9 should have been The Phantom Menace given the Emperor's resurrection. Somehow Palpatine returned. Wait, do we believe this? It cannot be! However, the one that really draws our ire is Attack of the Clones. Sure, the clones get to do some fighting in the climax, but the real attack comes in the next movie when Order 66 is executed. Before we unveil our top pick, here is an honorable mention. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation A whole nation doesn't go rogue, the mission wasn't impossible, and this title is all wrong. We had an agreement. You send me to do a job, I do it, but my way, not yours. Where did I deviate? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Karate Kid while a Karate Kid remake wasn't necessary, this film gave the familiar story a fresh spin by moving to China and focusing on Kung Fu. Did you say it, student do? Oh, great. That solves everything for me. I'll just go down to the school and straighten it out with the teacher, no problem. So why wasn't the film called The Kung Fu Kid, or even The Kung Fu Dream as it's known in China? We get that The Karate Kid is a brand name, but we still would have made the connection. Now, whenever somebody mentions The Karate Kid, we have to ask, 1984 or 2010? Thanks. Be respectful. I got it. I put my jacket on a thousand times, and I took it off a thousand times. Okay? This is stupid. I'm done. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.